Peter Hill Explains, where I invite you to join the science teaching conversation with me about optical fibre chemical sensors. I'm do this in a couple of minutes, and so this is a podcast discussing the invention or basically possible new ideas for optical fibre sensors. And I'll give this off to a couple of mates to have a, a think about, and. Uh, uh, just some context, uh, I've got to uh, increase my, my cognitive powers out of in this cardiac rehab I'm doing, uh, and also optical fiber sensors, like there's so many good inventions I have, this is really, you know, at the extreme end. If I'm worrying about trying to commercialize these inventions, it's you know, a, a, it's the end of the earth. I'm not in the right position, so I may as well just share them uh, with it. Uh, so let's firstly look at uh, what an optical fibre is. An optical fibre is a 125 micron um, uh, a diameter glass tube. And so what's done is there's uh, basically a, possibly a 4 centimetre wide optical fibre and it's pulled down as toffee down to this very fine tube so if you have if you've ever played with toffee you'll, you'll be able to get the linear molecules to get up and so glass is heated up so it's just soft enough and with pressure it's just pulled enough and it pulls out really fine and in the centre of this glass tube by different processes uh, you can place metals in the centre to create a higher refractive index and this higher refractive index acts as a very long extended guided lens. So really an optical fibre is a 10, a 10, 60 kilometre long guided lens. It's a light guide and you've got a fibre on the ins- uh, a core on the inside and you have a cladding on the outside. And it's, uh, well, it's really basically best treated by wave functions. There's a wave function across of light across the very centre um, and uh, that wave is like an atom. It, c- it can have a stable orbit of light in it and this is a single mode optical fibre and uh, uh, at the lower index you can have uh, um, cladding modes so that you can launch the light down the core you can also launch it for a short distance down the the cladding so the core is generally about 10 microns across and the optical fiber is generally 125 micron across so you can fit about eight per millimeter just roughly yeah well, what is it um four yeah eight eight per millimeter what i'm thinking um no yeah eight, eight, eight per per millimeter roughly across so that's a millimeter is not a lot the optical fibers are nice as well now um uh so you can launch light by focusing a laser beam down an optical the guts of an optical fiber and uh, you can do things to the core like soften the intensity of the lens and uh, basically create a mini lens inside the optical fiber so you can pre-shape the optical fiber to absorb light or uh, enlarge the core and uh, shape it up like that that's a tech thermally expanded core fiber um, and you can dope the core with different metals so what you do is you have um, salts of the metal uh, and uh, when the uh, you start off with a hollow tube and you can uh, introduce these salts into the very core uh, and with the glass gas basically glass gas can deposit a small glass particles on the inside and then you can uh, with vacuum shrink this down such the uh, tube collapses and the cores created in the center i'm not describing this very well because i want to get I've only got a short distance now to get uh, get home, and so uh, with this we want to make a uh, uh, chemical sensors, distributed chemical sensors, and so uh, there's two chemical sensors I want to 
uh, really uh, get get up. Um, now um, there's a catalytic converter in every single car on the planet. Well, yeah, basically now, unless you've got one vintage car which produces heaps of smog, and, and these are little. Um, Pro chemical purification factories in everyone's exhaust pipe and uh, towards the engine is uh, oh, I think ruthenium um, uh, section of the first half of the catalytic converter and uh, what happens is the hot gas hits the uh, ruthenium uh, Microparticles, which are uh, encased in um, uh, as little little particles of metal, encased uh, on the surface of this. Uh, how do I describe it? Sort of grid, extended grid. These long tubes. Uh, it's like a charge. It's a channel array. And I just have to remember. I can't quite remember the the process of it. So the first one is uh, ruthenium and then uh, the upper I think it is ruthenium oh no it's uh, rhodium rhodium ruthenium and then uh, up the other end you have uh, palladium and platinum uh, and so what happens is the uh, rhodium uh, converts the nitrous oxide to uh, uh, oxygen and then um, the palladium on the second half converts that new newly found oxygen so reharvests oxygen from the exhaust gas and then burns the remaining uh, gas catalytically converts the remaining carbon monoxide and uh, well nitrogen the carbon dioxide carbon monoxide out so we were producing smog, uh, nitrous oxide. The nitrous oxide reveals oxygen in the first part of the chamber, and then um, you convert and pr uh, produce. Uh, 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 oh, sorry, you produce uh, uh, stuff at the other end. Um, uh, now, and this is all that at high temperature. Now at the moment in every single car there is a heavily, uh, when I say heavy, it weighs a few grams, two oxygen sensors before uh, and after. And uh, yeah I've just got a really, so they've got two chemical sensors before and after and uh, basically uh, uh, if your catalytics Converter is not working. It, uh, uh, depending on what happens, uh, you'll get oxygen in your exhaust, which is a bad thing. Um, now I just really have to, in my head, remember what's what's going on there. But essentially, um, what we want to do is coat the optical fiber with uh, stripes of. Uh, uh, into inter, inter space roughly every tenth of a millimeter uh, sp space rib sections of uh, uh, with uh, rhodium so it's a known process uh, to coat it with say you coat it with firstly with chrome and then after the chrome you coat it with uh, um, uh, Rhodium, rhodium stripes. So this is uh, basically producing a temperature, uh, which will be a temperature grading uh, in the optical fiber. This is a cladding loss grading. So you, it, you can actually apply a rhythmic comb to a uh, optical fiber, a long cone to an optical fiber, and get. Um, and get uh, uh, a loss grating. So the light actually transmitted through the optical fiber uh, will, if there's perturbations of the cladding, 
at this rate, which allows coupling, coupling terms between the cladding mode and the core mode, if you provide a perturbation to the cladding, such that then couples, light will just leak out of the core and uh, for particular frequencies. And uh, so uh, this is an optical, uh, I think this is correct, this is an optical fibre method of making a, a fibre detector which goes in. And uh, it's got some sort of really beautiful advantages for it because you can have a, a, a photonic a chemical sensor for your catalytic, catalytic converter. And uh, uh, es essentially this fibre goes in uh, and you can just hook up your uh, optical fibre to it and uh, it can detect the efficiency of your catalytic converter uh, and to a much incredibly, uh, I think, high degree, much more sensitive than the actual um, current thing, which is an oxygen sensor for an art. I can't quite, gee, my mind's going, I can't quite remember what that's doing. So I, I can see a lot of advantages for it in terms of uh, being able to uh, construct something which is rather sexy and well put together um, as a sensor and uh, so this requires a uh, metallization of the outside of an optical fiber but then after that it's really rugged so uh, all your F18s and your uh, oh, I forgot what the name JSF I can't believe JSF 20 years ago I was consulting on the Joint Strike fire, uh, Fighter whatever it is, stupid project. They still haven't delivered them to the Australian Air Force. I just, what, what, what is going on there? But, um, that's all optical fibres. Optical fibre is uh, something in terms of making lightweight um, uh, detectors. Now, um, again, uh, uh, again, uh, in terms of core, I only get short, uh, uh, a, a short chance to say this is um, there's a rare earth called Geo Gondolin, and this is uh, got this. This is a rare earth. You can put it in optical fiber, but it has the property that its temperature drops once you take it out of the magnetic field. And so I don't know if, you, if that makes a lot of sense. You could put a a, a grating in uh, gondolin doped fibre and uh, then put the fibre in a place of flux fluctuating magnetic field and um, I just can't work out um, the thermodynamics of this um, uh, in terms of uh, you just can't subtract heat out of a, a situation uh, but uh, 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 at least in terms of being able to detect a, a, a sudden change in magnetic field, um, having a, a, a fiber which is non-magnetic, uh, uh, which can then detect magnetic field strength. Um, so, yeah, I don't know quite how that it goes, but that, that at least is an interesting uh, rare earth to put in an optical fiber and then check its behavior in magnetic fields and. Uh, uh, gond I can't pronounce it. Goldium, gold, gold, I can't pronounce the octal fire, but that's got some real interesting potential. So it's stack, it's whack in the center of the, uh, F block, but it's got a, a rogue D block electron. Uh, it's rather than actually, um, it's got eight unpaired electrons. It's like it's massive. It's got a massive nuclear no, electric magnetic moment, and we know that in glass uh, the electrons are preserved for it, so this is the entire thing of erbium fluorescence and all that that type of stuff. So it's got a huge potential uh, to be one thing which uh, interacts um, uh, with magnetic field, perhaps in a non-linear way. It's worth, worth having, uh, checking that out. Thanks for listening.
podcast, another story comes to a close. It's been a pleasure sharing this moment in time with you. May you discover truly amazing things, understand them and tell others. Thanks for listening.